Thank you. Yes, as Sophie said, I'm here to introduce to you Aurelia's latest new product, uh, the SpectraTime MRO50, a mini rubidium oscillator. So let's get started. But before I start, uh, let me tell you a little bit about Aurelia. Aurelia is a world leader in resilient PNT, position, navigation, and timing. When you think of PNT, you probably think of GPS, or more precisely, the GNS. Signals. It's a great way to, to know your position, right? But uh, the big problem with GNSS is the signals are not always available, very weak, and they can even be uh, spoofed or faked things. So what we do at Arolia is uh, use GNSS signals, but also complement them with all kinds of other technology to make it resilient so we can produce time and location that you can trust. So let's continue on. Arolia is a global company, um, been around now for uh, almost 15 years uh, with headquarters both in Europe and in the US, uh, but a presence in more than 100 uh, countries. You, over the 15 year period, uh, it's been a fusion of several different companies that you may recognize some of the company names on the right, that these have become very well trusted brands in PNT and in search and rescue. So let's now talk about atomic clocks, atomic clocks and oscillators. Um, why we make all kinds of, uh, of atomic clocks, but why, why should you care? What does uh, atomic clock have to do with navigation? Well, uh, time and space are related. As, as Einstein taught us, uh, the time and space continuum, uh, they're, they're related. And in fact, the way we measure space, the way we measure length, the, the definition of a meter now is really the, the, the time, uh, the, it's defined in time now, the time it takes a, a beam of light to transverse a meter. That's how we precisely measure a meter. So time and space are related. And so in fact, time is the, 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 one, the one physical quantity that we're able to measure most precisely out to now 17, 18 decimal points, which is more than anything else. So what what uh, Spectre Time, our, our Spectre Time uh, division has been doing for decades, has been making uh, all kinds of um, of atomic clocks. Um, and in fact, here's an example of a, uh, a number of places where they're used. If we look on the left hand side, um, uh, where the Spectre Time active hydrogen maser has been used in radio astronomy to for deep space exploration. If you recall last year, the photographing uh, first time of a true black hole, that was done by synchronizing radio telescopes from all over the world and synchronizing them with the iMaser 3000. So very, very proud of that. An another area we're very proud, if we look on the right-hand side here is a passive hydrogen maser that is in all of the Galileo um, uh, Galileo navigation satellites. Um, a hydrogen maser is the most accurate, most stable of any atomic clock. And there is only one space qualified hydrogen maser in existence today that's flying in the any navigation satellites. And it is the, um, it is the uh, uh, Spectre Time passive hydrogen major, the PHM that we refer to. So, uh, but also you'll see there's many other applications, aerospace, ground systems, uh, satellite communications, all kinds of places that use really high precision frequency and timing sources. And so we have a whole catalog of them, um, just many, many different types. Um, so if if we'll do that, but let's let's go for what you're really here today to hear about, which is our newest product, the MRO50, a mini rubidium oscillator. The the real exciting factors that we have here is it is the 
highest stability of any mini atomic clock in existence today. It, a, a mini atomic clock is has so uh, uh, very low power consumption. And so what it is, in fact, if you're familiar with an OCXO, this picture here looks exactly like an OCXO, an, an oven controlled crystal oscillator or quartz crystal. It's the common used in many, many systems. Well, this this uh, this product is in the exact same size and shape, so it can be a drop in replacement of a OCXO and it actually has 100 times or more stability than a standard OCXO. Drop in replacement, yet less power consumption than an OCXO. So the kind of applications you can do, of course, um, aerospace where we're uh, what we call having low swap, low size weight power, and of course, low cost uh, is, is always important. So aerospace applications, which really need low swap, military applications, I'll go into that, and also commercial, and I'll go into, into those uh, as well. So let's look at the military applications. Um, first thing is, as we mentioned, you, you, uh, for navigation, for positioning, is, is uh, often when you're using GNSS signals, uh, you go into phase. They're very weak signals, and the way that you receive them is it uses a technique called spread spectrum. So what you're doing is integrating some very long spread codes over time. It, to acquire these kinds of things, you're, 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 you're actually pulling a signal out from underneath the noise. And it takes uh, a, a receiver usually several minutes to, to uh, find these codes in both time and frequency. And so once you find it and then if you lose it, you have to reacquire, you can lose minutes of, of operational time. If in fact you have a, an atomic oscillator and this atomic oscillator is, is almost as good as, as the ones that are in the satellites, you can stay synchronized even over periods of, of loss of many minutes, even, even sometimes hours, and then reacquire quickly. Very important application. Similarly, in radio transmission, when you have multiple radios on a single net, many of these network protocols use what's called time division multiple access. So it, you're working in time, and so again, you have to, especially critical missions, you have to go either radio silent or you lose sync with the net. Well, you can coast, you can continue to stay in sync uh, well beyond for many minutes and then come onto the net uh, and in fact even go into when you might go into like po uh, power saving modes and stuff. So staying radio silent, power saving modes, come back on and be synchronized. Lastly, another application would be UAVs or drones, as we say. And as I said, when it comes to navigation, the same thing that they're experiencing when maybe when they, they go through tilts, uh, they momentary losses in the GNSS signal. Uh, they can rely on that. Or also, they also have inertial navigation systems. Inertial navigation system uses accelerometers and gyroscopes, and you're integrating those force and, and torque measurements. You're integrating them over time. In fact, the double integration. So any error you have in your time base is 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 doubly integrated into into your error thing. So having an accurate time basis is, is very important. Let's look at commercial applications. Um, uh, any any radio transmitting site, whether it's a a cellular base station or a digital television uh, transmitter needs precise frequency. Uh, some even need precise time synchronization. And so having many of these stations will use a GNSS receiver to do that. But again, if they lose GNSS, they need to uh, maintain their time accurately. They, they can do that very good with an atomic clock, but now do that with a very low cost atomic clock. Likewise, the, the um, uh, driverless car application. As we move to autonomous vehicles, they have the uh, same situation of GNSS, of 
of inertial navigation, uh, but all and also some real time synchronization of commu communication links. All of those factors now even in the commercial world. And then lastly, um, underwater, a very good use case for miniature atomic clocks is for seismic sensing. You need to put um, uh, seismic sensors underwater that either are sensing um, uh, 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 the earth vibration or uh, sonic vibrations through the water. And these are battery operated devices since when you're underwater, you can't get radio frequencies at all. And so a battery operated device that needs to stay in the sink for many hours or even days. Perfect application for a low power atomic clock that doesn't use much battery power, but yet maintains a very long time of, um, of, his, uh, of, of stability. So let me play a, a, um, a uh, video here as soon as I, there's my mouse uh, play a video here for you that will show you some of those um, some of those features. So let's now go back and see what else we can tell you about um, this. So, um, so there, our MRO50 fits into our catalog in three areas. So we call our iSource product line is where it's a frequency source. So just a standalone oscillator anywhere you need, as I mentioned before, a drop-in replacement for uh, any OCXO. Uh, if you need a space qualified oscillator, so we said uh, Spectra Time has a wonderful history of being a leader in space based atomic clocks. And so uh, there's also a space uh, qualified version. And lastly, if you need it uh, married with a, a GPS receiver, uh, so you get the best of both worlds, you get the stability from the GNSS system. Plus, you get the holdover of an atomic clock. So um, a very useful thing. Here are the technical details. I won't go into it um, uh, too well uh, into the, the details, but as I uh, uh, just repeat, uh, stability. The way we measure stability, you'll see there, is we call uh, ADEV or Allen deviation. And so uh, there's different options available. But again, for a mini atomic clock, the, this is the highest stability available of any mini atomic clock um, and uh, much higher stability than anything you'd get in an OCXO. Dro is the dimensions of a standard OCXO are shown there. The power, power consumption, actually less than a half a watt if you're working off of a five volt system, uh, uh, about a third of a watt, and this is maximum, uh, uh, maximum uh, power consumption, about a third of the watt, if you're working off a 3.3 volt system. So much lower than uh, a typical um, uh, OCXO uh, type device. Here's a comparison of how the MRO50 compares to other now larger, more expensive, you know, the, 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 the kind of um, uh, a, a standard atomic clocks 
that have been uh, available to date. So what we have here is on our X axis, we have power consumption. And as you can see, some of those larger atomic clocks I was showing you before, they have they have um, very good stability, but they consume anywhere from 10 to a to 100 watts. On our Y axis, we have we, we show now the stability or the accuracy as what we call holdover. How much drift in time would you have in microseconds if you let the um, oscillator uh, operate for one full day? And as you can see, you know, to get a microsecond or better of time requires it's that you 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 have to use an atomic clock to do that. And already the MRO 50 is better than some other uh, other types of uh, of oscillators. So it now is in the range of where the atomic uh, uh, clocks are um, and with low power under a watt. So anything to the to the lower left hand side of this um, graph is is a is a very uh, very desirable oscillator. So um, briefly, I'll just show you what's involved, what's inside uh, uh, a mini uh, rubidium oscillator. Uh, we have two halves to it: the what we call the physics package that has the the um, the the rubidium um, element along with V cells or um, uh, a, a laser diode which excites the atoms and then the measurement of the the energy given off or the, the microwave energy that's given off by, by the by, by those um, uh, electrons as they change state and so that's what's detected you're seeing the the, the quantum energy that's given off uh, as those um, as those atoms are, are going through their state changes and those are perfectly accurate frequencies. And so then electronics package um, uh, detects that microwave frequency, uh, phase locks an internal oscillator to that. And so now you have a super accurate frequency source. Uh, this is a completely patented uh, method and uh, is uh, proven now over our, our, our patent has been around now since uh, 2014, so it's really proven reliability on this. Um, lastly, I'll show you just some applications. As, you know, as I mentioned early on, that Arolia is a leader in resilient PNT. We make uh, several, um, several, several uh, PNT products. Here's an example of two of them. Uh, the Versa Sync and the Versa PNT. These are rugged, uh, airborne um, uh, devices to give you PNT or time and frequency. Uh, excellent sources with that that we combine with many other technologies to give you that resiliency. And the MRO 50 uh, fits right into these products. So with that, um, Sophie, uh, I guess I'll turn it back to you and we'll we'll have a question and answer period. Exactly. So uh, first question on. What is the phase noise performance of this part? Uh, yes, yes, uh, very good. Um, uh, you can find the data sheet on our website. It'll give you the list of all the um, phase noise um, uh, parameters. We have very good phase noise. Uh, out at um, uh, one kilohertz and 10 kilohertz above, we're at minus 40 uh, dBC. So very good, very quiet uh, phase noise uh, and uh, different different options. So see our website, see the data sheet there. But uh, again, very important for communication systems, radars, anywhere in your in your communication link budget. Um, uh, you're, you'll be very concerned about phase noise. Next question. Next question. Can you comment on the suitability of the MRO 50 for low Earth orbit CubeSight space applications? Yes. Oh, great question. Yes. Um, um, excellent, actually. So here, here's an example as we sh shown uh, before. Maybe I should even go back and show the picture of of here. If you look at our space uh, qualified um, 
Uh, here's our space qualified rubidium oscillator. Here's our space qualified passive maser. These are large, rather large devices. These are probably um, maybe 10, 20 centimeters long, uh, uh, heavy, probably a couple, uh, four or five kilograms. You know, these are rugged uh, devices. Um, the whole LEO satellite movement, we're seeing thousands of new satellites. Some people call them nano satellites are being launched. Cannot have these fully space qualified type of um, oscillators. Uh, this is a perfect application for a mini atomic oscillator. Again, smaller satellites, uh, so you need lower power consumption. There's only a fixed amount of power on a satellite. They only have so much um, as, they, as they get smaller, their, their solar cells have to be smaller, their batteries have to be smaller. So low power consumption is very important. Small size and weight is very important. So this is an ideal application. And yet, uh, coming from um, SpectraTime, who has a history of knowing how to make space-based components, uh, it's, a, it's a perfect application. Good question, thank you. Other questions? I think this is it. OK, all right. Well, Sophie, I think we've uh, done that again. I'll refer folks to our our website um, and uh, anything that they want to know about that. The, the you'll find a nice data sheet there and please contact us if you have any questions in the future. Thank you, John.